Hi and welcome. So today guys, I will be sharing with you our 2018 budget, the annual numbers, how we set it up. And I will also just kind of give you guys a little glimpse of our lifestyle and how we choose to live. Now this video will probably be a little lengthy, so definitely grab yourself a drink. Now what I will do is I will timestamp the video per topic that I discussed and I will leave that down below in the description box for you. So if there's anything particular that you want to know about or want to know how I handle it, then you can just kind of skip ahead and so on. Now I do hope that everything that I share is beneficial, that it helps you out. I like to say that my crazy will help your crazy and so on. And also all the topics that I do discuss or hit on, I will leave it in the description box listed in a question form. I would love it if you guys would take the time and answer those questions down in the comments for me. And also for any other content creators, if you are looking to start sharing your budget relating um, tips, topics, how you budget, how you handle your family's finances and so on with your audience, then by all means, feel free to utilize these topics and definitely build upon them. Now I won't tag anyone. I won't do it as a tag video or anything like that. As I know, talking about personal finance is just that personal and not everyone is comfortable with it. So I'm not going to tag anyone. don't want to put anyone on the chopping block, so to speak. Now, so just a little back history about us. We are a family of six, seven when you include Lola the Pug. It is myself, my husband. We have four kiddos. At the recording of this video, my oldest is about to be turning 17. I have another one that's going to be turning 11. I said another one. My youngest daughter is going to be turning 11. My youngest son will be 7 in a few months. And then my oldest daughter at the end of the year will be 14. So four kids total, two teens and two little ones. And again, a fur baby. Currently at this stage of life, I have found myself to be unemployed. Let me back up. I have been self-employed for the last six years. I am licensed by the state to operate a home-based child care. My license is still active. However, since August of 2017, after Hurricane Harvey, I did not have any other clients. I had started doing contract work, working with FEMA, and that work is due to get well, it's scheduled to end the end of February. And so after that, I'm really not quite sure what I'm going to do with myself. I'm just kind of all over the place. Um, to say the least, so Michelle doesn't have a plan, not officially anyway. I'm just walking by faith and allowing the Lord to lead my steps and so on. But my husband, thank God, is working a full-time job in his profession. I won't say profession of choice. Well, not of choice because his, his profession of choice and his passion is working with children in the sports arena um, or sports field, but he is certified to be a QC, which is a quality control inspector. So anyways, he's working full time. So thank God for that. So we are technically officially a one income family. Now I have always budgeted um, based on one income, but knowing that we had that safety net because we did have the other income as well, which we use that to take care of things for the house, um, savings, vacations, etc., etc. But now we are truly, truly, truly a one income family. So that's a huge adjustment within itself. Um, and I had to kind of move some things around and, and readjust kind of sort of how I do things, but more on that later. So I do have our annual numbers here and I'm going to go over those. I'm going to just hit them in a quick total. Um, and then I will list it somewhere on the screen as I'm going through uh, the breakdown and how it works out. So for our housing expense, for 2018, it's $22,184. For the savings goals that I haven't planned, that I have planned, it's going to be $15,000. That includes retirement and other investments. For our food, groceries throughout the year, this does not include eating out or anything, this is just groceries, $5,100. For clothing, for all of us, it's $1,200. Transportation is $8,420. Healthcare, we, my husband actually has um, coverage through his job, so thank God for that. However, if we had to pay it out of pocket, we would be looking at $5,620 for one of the very basic, basic, basic health plans out there. Life insurance, $1,680. 
Lola's Care, $1,080. Pleasure Spending, $9,660. That's a lot of money for pleasure. Entertainment, $4,700. And then the total amount of debt that I am aiming to pay off in 2017, that will list us as completely debt-free outside of our mortgage. That total is $15,912 for a grand total of $84,936. We need to net at least $84,936. $936, which we can just go ahead and call that $85,000 for the year. So again, that's very scary to me, um, being that now we're truly on one income. So again, we don't have that reserve of another income in case something happened to the only source of income. So I have a lot of thinking to do because I still have um, a lot of financial goals that I want to meet and so on. But moving on. So I'm going to um, quickly just kind of go over a few things with you guys. Our lifestyle. So first off, we live what I consider a very basic, bland lifestyle. Um, when it comes to our clothing, we are not label people, if you will. Meaning I, I don't value, I don't value brands. So I don't, we shop at Walmart, Target, Ross, um, my husband shops at consignment sales. I'm not really big on consignment sales. I can do really good at uh, Walmart on the clearance racks, but he does shop at consignment sales for these specialty type tees. He likes like the sports tees and what have you. Um, he will get them there. Um, we are we are very fortunate to get um, hand-me-downs pretty much every single year for my, oh, my two oldest kids. They get it from um, their family back home, so thank God for that. But we don't we don't spend money on labels or just because it says Nike, Jordan, whoever, Tommy Hilfiger, is he still a thing? Whoever, we don't, um, we don't buy, we don't spend money on labels is what I'm saying. So again, Walmart, Target, Ross, and so on. I know by all means I can find label or brand name clothing at stores like Ross and it'll be less than, less expensive than if I bought it at the mall or the outlet, etc. I totally know that. However, in my opinion, again, I don't need to spend $20 less than what it would cost me at the mall just because it has a, a name brand on it. When I can take that $20, go to Walmart, and I can get the girls four shirts a piece. You know what I mean? $3.88 for a shirt. So on. If you take care of your clothing, you're using quality um, laundry detergent, as I have a stockpile of laundry detergent, and you wash your clothes and dry them appropriately, they will last. It does not have to be brand name okay moving on so that's again lifestyle another lifestyle um thing i would say is that we currently we don't have cable it took me a very long time to convince my husband to let the cable go but we finally did at the end or the top of summer last year so we no longer have cable thank goodness for that including ground service internet so i actually use a hot spot off of my um cell phone for internet service and it works out perfectly i'm the only one that truly needs it to operate my laptop the kiddos don't need it if they do homework um, typically they can do it on their phone if they need to print something off then I just print off from my um, laptop so we don't have cable um, another thing we don't have a specialty diet or anything so we are not vegan or vegetarian we're not eating a gluten-free diet so I can get away with spending roughly about five thousand which is really significantly less on food because I do coupon and utilize coupon uh, rebate apps and stuff like that. Um, another thing, we choose not to have a core note. Or I should say, I choose not to have a core note. Um, we don't have a core note. We have not had a core note in probably seven and a half, eight years. Um, I choose to pay for all my vehicles cash. And what I do is pretty much um, just pay myself a corno each month. So I would typically pay, what, 300 bucks for a corno. So I aim to put that amount of money away each month into an investment account. And when the time comes to purchase a car, I will have cash sitting there to do so. I'm not, um, I don't need to have the latest and greatest things or, you know, whatever's new that just came out. That's not, again, going back to the brand. I, I don't feel the need to have the latest and greatest. Again, y'all see me in the same shirts over and over again because I love my t-shirts. And this one here I got from a concert. Now, I will tell you, 
that I highly, highly, highly value experiences. So I will not spend my money on a $60 purse. However, I will go to a concert in no time flat. Um, that's just me. That's, I guess, part of the lifestyle, if you will. Okay, so more on that in another video, but moving on. All right, so I'm just going to go off my list here. How do I stay organized with um, bills, financial documents, um, and so on? I use the binder. I am a binder girl to the T. I actually have a video here um, as I walk you through how my binder is set up uh, related to everyday finances. So I will leave that link um, above for you as well as down below. Who manages the um, budget and the overall finances? I do, obviously, um, and I'm definitely a micromanager. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, I check my accounts every single day, our um, main bank account, the additional bank accounts, um, sink fund bank account, as well as investment accounts. Yeah, now, not the retirement accounts. I don't check them every single day, uh, but I do have other little mini investment accounts where I um, invest in stocks and stuff like that. I do check that pretty much on a daily basis. So I do, and I very much so micromanage. Um, who, when do I sit down and pay the bills? Well, in the past, I would pay bills every single week, which would typically be on a Friday. Um, Friday morning, Friday afternoon, I would sit down and do all that. But now, since we are on one income, and we're getting paid twice a week versus every week, I'm getting in the habit of paying the bills every other Friday. So if, at the week after, the day after my hubby gets paid, I will sit down then and pay all the bills. So still on Fridays, but now it's every two weeks. Um, do I do I use a financial planner? Yes, I do. And if you currently do not, whether or not you have tons and tons and tons and tons of monies or you have tons and tons and tons of debt, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you find a financial planner in your local community, someone that will understand your goals, your needs, understand where you're coming from and where you're trying to go and so on. We need someone that is two steps ahead of us um, and that's smarter than us. You know, one thing I, I always tell my kids is that the moment you realize you are the smartest person in the room, you need to change your, your surroundings. Think about it. If you are the smartest one in your group of friends, in the, the circle that you hang out in, etc., then nine times out of 10, there will be no room for you to grow because you won't learn anything from them. They will probably be constantly draining you. So I don't mean that to be negative, but I'm, I'm honestly being true. I tell my kids that all the time, the moment that you realize you're the smartest one in the room, not that you think you're smart, but you realize that you are the smartest one in the room, it's time to change your circle. Anyways, financial planner. Yes, I use one and I highly recommend that no matter what your current financial situation is, that you use someone that understands finances and that studies it not only as a passion but as a living as well. You need someone in your corner that's going to point you in the right direction. Moving on. Um, are you currently saving for retirement? Yes, we are, but not nearly as, as much as we should be for the goals that we have. So, yes, we are, but we definitely need to step it up. Do you currently have any debt? Yes. I do. As I mentioned before, we have $15,000 um, left in debt to be paid off completely outside of our mortgage. And that is my goal for 2018 is to become completely debt free. All right. So moving on. What I'm going to do um, now is I'll turn the camera on and share with you guys how my budget binder is set up for 2018. Really nothing honestly has changed. Um, I did add in just a few things. So I'll share that with you. Um, and then I will complete my budget on camera and show you guys exactly how I budget and handle the money, pay bills, all that kind of stuff there and everything. Um, yeah, so let's turn the camera around and get started. All right, so here's the bill binder, my pride and joy. Now, only thing that changed for 2018 really is that I updated the cover to reflect that it is 2018. So it just basically states budget binder. Um, family budgeting system for 2018, running my house like a boss. Now, I actually think I'm going to probably change this out for something that says um, debt-free in 2018 or something around that realm because that's the plan is to become completely debt-free in 2018 outside of our mortgage. Okay, so the other thing that I changed for 2018 in the binder 
is that I, well, this is this has always been here. So this is a little pencil pouch that we utilize to put the kids' um, commission money in here. And then we also keep the church envelopes so the kids can pay their tithes um, when they get paid their commission. We pay our tithes online, but the kids write out an envelope and drop theirs off um, in the box on Sundays. So what I did is that I actually um, added the added four more um, pencil pouches that these particular categories would typically be in my my savvy sense wallet and let me show you that now she is completely she nasty look at that she i mean I, I have been using this thing for quite some time but it's a savvy sense wallet i'll leave a link if i can find it i brought this a couple years ago um but i'm sure i can google it and find it but i'll leave a link to it down below i think you can get it on amazon as well it is I'm not a sponsored video. I just absolutely love this wallet. It has held up quite well. Um, again, it is pretty rough because I use it on a daily basis and it gets set down everywhere. And I can probably take a Clorox white to it and, you know, clean it up. But moving on. So it has a zipper here and all that stuff there. If you look up Savvy Sense wallet, you'll get a bunch of reviews. But typically what I have always done is that inside the wallet, I have several little dividers and different categories. And the categories that are now in a pencil pouch inside the bill binder is what would typically be inside uh, my wallet. Now the reason, the main reason why I changed it is, so I always tell you guys that everyone has a money story. Everyone relates to money differently um, and so on. And I've come to realize that with my husband, I think it made him feel... Um, some kind of way having to come to my wallet to get money out for gas, haircuts, and things like that. It's not that he didn't have access to it because obviously he does. It's just that it, it was held in my wallet mostly because I'm the one that do all the errands, um, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, to have a clean slate and so that no one be feeling any kind of way, I went ahead and took those categories and I put them inside the bill binder. Um, and so on. I mean, it's really the same concept. The money goes in there and he takes out what he needs. I take out what I need. Okay, so let me show you the inside of the wallet. So it has your standard um, card slot. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's a little place here in the very back. It's kind of tight, but I just kind of stuck a extra divider that I have there. I did an area here for your driver's license. I keep a $2 um, bill for good luck. And then there's several different dividers inside the wallet. So um, as you guys see, I've been using this thing for a while, so it's kind of a hot mess. My tags actually fell off. So this one here with the glitter used to say my money. So my personal allowance money, I would stick here. And um, I will put it here, and then I have a tab behind it on the same divider where it says EO that stands for eating out. So typically what I do with my personal money is I'll kind of divide it up uh, for what I know I'm going to be using it for or what I plan on using it for. So what I do is uh, put a little bit behind here and this would be my money to go ahead and splurge at McDonald's. When I'm out running errands, couponing and all that stuff there, I'll stop by there, get a Coke cookie and a fry. No, it's not the healthiest, but it's my jam. So then I do keep my gift cards here. I always get gift cards um, when I have a daycare. My daycare parents would always bless me with gift cards, as well as I will cash out on several rebate apps that I use and cash out for gift cards to places that I normally um, would eat at or shop at, etc. So those would go in there as well. And then there was a little pouch here that says DC. Not sure if it's coming through on the camera. But it says DC, that stands for daycare. So um, when I had the daycare going, I would put like petty cash in here so that if I was at the Dollar Tree or something and there was something that I saw that we needed for a curriculum or just something I wanted to pick up in general for the, um, the daycare, I would have cash on hand to do that. And then here too, this here had a little tab that said groceries and obviously it fell off way back when. Then this says H supply that stands for house supply which is basically my couponing fund so the money that I use for couponing will go behind there and then grocery money will go in here 
And now my grocery budget is 400 for the month at the current month or the current time. I don't put all 400 in here. I take what I'm going to be using at the grocery store. That definitely gives me um, or that limits me from being able to go over that budget. So if I only put 100, then that's all I have to spend, period. It's $100. I can't spend 120 130 and so on. So it does take some discipline to go to a complete cash system. But for me, it is well worth it. Okay, and then I have a spot back here that says gas and then Lola. So I will put my gas money there and then Lola's uh, money there as well. And then I have one for miscellaneous and clothing. So miscellaneous, just miscellaneous, those random things that may come up. I'll keep a couple bucks for clothing. So if I'm out at Target, at Walmart, and they have clearance items uh, for the kiddos, myself, or, you know, the hubby, I can pick it up and I'll have money there. Now, in the event that I'm out and I find something at a rock bottom price and I don't have the cash, um, like, for clothing, in the clothing fund, and but I have it elsewhere, I'll just take it out of that and then I will replace what I took out from the fund that it should have came from, if that makes sense. And then I have a little space here that says blessings. I don't know if you can see that, but I like to keep a couple dollar bills in here, especially when you see people on the side of the street, uh, whether they're, you know, truly homeless or just panhandling or whatever, let the Lord deal with them. But if I have a little extra in here, then I can, you know, slip them a couple bucks or something like that. So I like to keep that in there as well. So that is the... Um, the wallet in a nutshell. So again, I, all I did was the the things that I still keep in here, the, the funds I still keep in here are cash or hand. It's my money, um, the groceries, my gas, and the coupon. And then everything else I transferred into the pencil pouches and I put them inside the um, the binder. So let me show you that. So we have hair and nails. This also covers um, the guys and the girls, obviously. So I put a certain amount away each um, paycheck to cover the guys getting their haircuts, they get their haircuts every two weeks. The girls that I simply go maybe once every two months, they get our hair really deep conditioned, washed, flat iron, and all that stuff there. Um, and then, of course, I get my nails done, so that goes in there. Then we have for auto gas, keep my little um, shell reward card in here as a way to remind the hubby to use it because he kind of sometimes forgets. Um, and then I have um, Lola, Lola Food, and her grooming. And then I have a pocket for groceries, which is completely empty. Now, if you guys saw my um, last couple, maybe last two or three hauls from um, Kroger. Well, actually, I did one big haul from Kroger. So if you've seen that or seen any of the pictures I posted on Instagram, then you know that I definitely racked up last week um, at Kroger with meat deals. So I'm pretty much like done with my cro my um, grocery budget. I actually have about um, $20 left and it's sitting over here. I need to put that in my wallet. Anyways, um, I actually funded the grocery bill or the grocery budget at the end of December for January and I was able to stock up at the um, top of January for a few things and then I stocked up on meat this last previous week. So yeah, that's that. So we're pretty much stocked up in our freezer, refrigerator, pantry. So we're good to go as far as um, groceries and, and so on. Okay, so that is that. Let me, um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I um, lay out the sinking funds and track that. Um, yeah, so let's do that next. All right, so here are the sink funds for 2018. These are the funds that need to be funded each and every month in order to um, have the money there, of course, when that particular expense comes due. Now, all I've done is this is a sheet that's meant for like tracking or keeping um track of important dates to celebrate like your anniversaries, birthdays and so on. I'm actually just repurposing it, uh, repurposing it for my sink funds. So I just took some washi tape and then I used my label maker and put on their sinking funds. So it's really, really repetitive. Truly, truly it is. Um, and these are just the funds that we need to be making sure we're putting money into um, each and every month throughout 2018. And I'll explain why only these funds in a moment. But basically for the first five months, January through May, we're going to be uh, funding Memorial Day and Mason's birthday. And then from there, um, come June, I'm going to be switching over and funding Lola's insurance. We pay that annually and the auto insurance will start over in June as well. Again, this is very repetitive and I do this just that way in a nutshell, in the eyeball. I know exactly what needs to be funded throughout these months and so on. And then two, it's very easy for the husband to come in and see again, 
he's not really the guy that does all this and all these numbers, but he could come in and at least see that in January, we need to put a, you know, 140 away for Memorial Day and so on. And also, too, if anything was to ever happen to myself or my husband, um, my oldest son, who's 17 and probably will be turning 17 on the day that this video is released. Um, but he knows how to maneuver and work through here. So if anything was to ever happen to us, he can at least um, direct someone, whoever would come in to handle our affairs. He can at least, you know, tell them what's going on and all that stuff there. So it's important for me to make sure those type of things are taken care of. Um, my biggest fear is that, you know, I have seen it time and time again on a personal note, someone passes away and nobody, including the, the spouse, the kids, the sister, the brothers, nobody knows nothing about nothing and what's going on or where anything is. So I want to make sure that that's not something that would happen to us if something of that nature happened. So anyways, moving on. I hope that makes sense and all my crazy. So again, um, I just have it listed here what funds need to be funded and then the um, maximum amount that needs to be put away for each month. And again, it's very repetitive, but it goes in through that. Um, the things that are written in black is what I know I'm going to cash flow. So like for Easter, we don't do much. Um, as far as getting like Easter baskets or anything like that, I don't do that. I will pick up a few little trinkets at the dollar store for the kids, and I'll probably put that in a little gift bag or something like that. Um, the girls and I always get new sandals and church shoes, and I could pretty much get away with um, a $200 budget for all of that um, for from Target, Walmart, and Payless and so on. So we don't need a whole lot. Now, the guys may need a new shirt and dress pants, but again, between Target, Walmart, and even JCPenney's, I can get away with that for the guys too. Same thing with my um, Mother's Day and my birthday. We will cash flow that. Um, July 4th, we don't really do much or anything major. I don't know if we're going to do anything major this year, but we typically go to my sister's and we would just contribute there, um, whether getting snacks, drinks, liquor, fireworks, or what have you. So, That'll be, cash, that'll be cash flowed as well, as well as Labor Day and so on. Now, once I map out the um, the year, October is going to be one of those months where we have a bonus check or three checks. So I'm going to be able to cash flow or I should be able to cash flow if everything goes according to plan. Um, rodeo season as well as Amazon um, Prime Renewal and then our tax software. So rodeo season, I absolutely love rodeo time. It's the one time I get to go and see all my favorite country artists in concert um, for pennies on a dollar, you know, a hot $30 ticket and get me in. Um, so I will probably be cash flowing that in October. That's the plan. And I typically spend about 400 and that's just not on concerts. That's like everything included. That's taking the kids to the fair. Um, that's getting souvenirs as far as getting shirts. That's all the funnel cakes that I can stand, all the fried Oreos. Yes, I know I have a nasty habit of eating cookies, but whatever. Um, so anyways, all of that will be cash flow and so on. So again, this is how I kind of keep track of what absolutely has to get done um, each and every month. Now, it doesn't mean that every month we're able to hit it because things come up and it's life. Um, but at least I'm able to see that this is what needs to be done. So if there's extra money that comes in, let's say in March, Something comes along, I got some extra bonus money from somewhere, but I didn't fund something in February. I know that money from March needs to go into that category because it was missed for February. So there you have that. All right. So actually, let me show you this one as it's outlined a little bit better. So this is the master list for 2018. So again, I stated that the only ones that we were funding um, or that have to be funded no matter what is these because these are expenses that are going to come due whether or not we save money for it. And I rather not have a large amount due for the auto insurance um, at the end of every six months. Putting a little bit back every single month, it eases the blow instead of trying to take that large amount out of one paycheck when we still have that much bills that got to come out of that paycheck. Hope that makes sense. So this is how I track it. So pretty much everything that's on the top is things that are in the envelopes. And I'll show you guys that in a moment. And then everything down below is what's kept electronically in electronic baking envelopes. So basically, I use Capital One 360. They allow you to set up um, a checking account online, an online bank, and a savings account. And you can have, I believe, up to 25 different savings accounts that you can name and designate. Data, designate to what you would want it to be. So again, for us, I have Christmas, vacation, 
appliance and furniture replacement, car replacement, um, car maintenance, medical, HOA, auto insurance, loto insurance, Jalen Sr., which I have not started funding yet, um, but he will be a senior soon, so I need to start putting money away for that. Now, what I'm doing currently is that he actually receives child support from his biological dad, so I take a portion of that and put it away for um, college savings, and then another portion goes towards his first vehicle. Um, so I'll probably take a little bit out of that and then money from our budget and put towards his senior year um, fees, expenses, and all that stuff there. Membership dues, entertainment, um, it's revolving. So whenever there's a little extra money here and there, maybe $5, $10, nothing major, I'll throw it into the entertainment fund. So if there's something that comes up and we want to do, like for instance, the Monster um, Jam show is coming up in a few weeks and me and the boys are going to be going there. So that will come out of the entertainment fund. Um, house improvement, wealth building, uh, my business expense, and then I also put money away for self-employment tax. So when I am working and I am receiving income from self-employment, I aim to put between 10 to 15 percent of that income a month away so that when it comes time for taxes, um, I'm not hit with a large tax bill. Now, as far as the the uh, ones here that are pretty much with an asterisk, it is showing or letting me know that those are pretty much already funded at its cap. So I'm not worried with funding them for 2018. It doesn't mean that I won't need to put money into them because if I take money out, I want to get back to that comfortable um, number. So like for instance, the minor house repair, my cap for that is 300. So that is again, um, if the toilet goes out or something, like the little flap goes out and we need to go run in, you know, the Home Depot and get a new one, $15, what have you, that's what that money is going to come out of. And I have a cap of that of $300. So obviously, if the furnace went out, $300 is not going to cut it. It's not going to repair the furnace. So that would be something that would come out of our appliance um, replacement fund and so on. Um, so... Again, like the kids' school supplies is capped out at three eighty. Um, I pretty much have three eighty in that envelope, so we don't need to fund it for twenty eighteen. Um, however, as we take out of it to you know for miscellaneous school type of things and supplies, I will add money back into it just to kind of get back in that cap. And three eighty typically gets me through the school year as far as the kids' fees. Um, Jada will be going into high school next year, so I know she will have high school fees and dues. Here where we are, if they take any electives, they have elective dues as well. So like Jalen is in sculpture, so he had like maybe, I think, 50 something dollars this year that he had to pay for sculpture and equipment and all that stuff there. So that came out of that fund. So um, again, this is how I keep track of um, the 2018 sink funds, what I know that I need to be funding. This is telling me the amount that I need to have in there or that I would like to have in there. Um, and then the amount if I'm going to fund it monthly, if I'm going to put in bi-weekly, the amount, and if I'm putting in weekly, the amount. All right, and then flip it over. So again, this just goes in to the same thing that's on this side. It just kind of breaks it down a little bit more, what's in envelopes and then what's in the bank. Then this one here is our everyday envelope fund. So categories, groceries, couponing, auto gas, my money, justice money, clothing, guys' hair, girls' hair, nails, Lola food and grooming, kids' payroll, family fund, and then blessings. These are the categories that are in between my wallet and in between the uh, pencil pouches here. So a total that it comes out to for the month is $1,709. That's a lot of money when you look at it from that aspect, but when you break it down to the fact that that's covering our groceries, our auto gas, personal money, um, pet care, et cetera, et cetera. It's about average, I guess you would say. So I have a little chart here. Monthly, if I'm going to fund it monthly, I know how much I need to put into each category or each envelope. If it's going to be on a bi-weekly basis, I know how much I need to put in. If it's going to be weekly, I know how much I need to put in. So this is in a nutshell when I'm doing the budget and I'm writing out the weekly paychecks, I can glance at this and see exactly how much money needs to be putting into each envelope category, um, so on and so forth. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, to you. Now I'm going to, all right, so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to show you guys exactly how um, I budget on paper and then from there we will stuff the cash envelopes and start wrapping this video up. Okay, so this is how I pretty much lay out all the bills, expenses, and so on that is due for the um, 
the month or that yeah that is due for the month so i have showed you guys or shared with you guys before the bill log and um how i go about utilizing it so I've been doing this for many, many, many years and it just, it works for us. Now, it did take time to get to the point where I had the bills and, you know, our finances structured to where it fit with paying the bills within every five day increments, if that makes sense. So, um, what I did was I kind of, well, first off, what I used to do is when I would get paid or any income would come into the house, I would sit down at that moment and say, okay, what bills are due? And then I'll go in and I'll pay those bills. And it seemed like I was going into the account multiple times throughout the week, paying this bill, paying that bill, et cetera. And I finally got to the point where I realized that just doesn't make any sense. I'm doing too much, et cetera. So I wanted to kind of streamline things um, for myself. And when I took this financial class at um, my old church that I used to go to, a lady showed me this method of setting your bills up in five-day increments. So basically, Monday through Friday so on Fridays is when you would get paid um, and you would sit down and do your bills or if you got paid um, bi-weekly you would do the bills for the first you know two weeks of the month and then the next two weeks and so on so again it took time to get to this point I had to call my um, you know utility companies bill collectors and so on and set the bills up to where that work I simply just called them and said hey it would be best for me if my due date was this day as it works best for my payday and so on. Now, I've been doing this for quite some time. and We started doing this when I was still working 9 to 5 and the hubby was working 9 to 5. So we were still getting a paycheck um, in the house every week. So he would, we were both getting paid every two weeks. I would get paid this Friday and then he would get paid that Friday. So in essence, there was, two, um, there was a paycheck coming in every single week. And then once I went um, towards self-employment with the daycare, I still kept the bill structure the same way because at that point, he was still getting paid every two weeks, but I was getting paid every week. So it just still worked and made sense. Now that he's on a two-week um, schedule, and that's the only income that we have now, I'm pretty much still doing the exact same thing. However, I'm budgeting for two weeks at a time. So, And I'll show you guys that in a minute. But anyways... All I do is simply the amount I budget out for the expense and then once that, that bill statement comes in, I write down the actual amount that it was. I just add everything up and then I come down here and I total it all out. Now, let me just um, preface this because I don't believe I said this already. We're not going to show our actual income. Um, hubby's not comfortable with it and I have to respect that. So we're not going to show the actual income. And I'm not going to show the amount that we're giving for tithes because we do pay 10%. And obviously, if I show that, then you will be able to figure out exactly how much income um, was made. So we're not going to show that. But I come in and I will put the amount for weekly envelopes, the amount towards sink funds, the bills that we have, the debt payment, and then any snowball payment, which is the extra debt that we're paying on one particular debt payment. Okay. Let's come back up here. So here it says um, this month sink funds. And again, I know what sink funds I'm going to be funding this month because I have it on this sheet here. So I'm just going to simply come in and write um, monthly amount, bi-weekly amount, and then weekly. And I'm writing the item that it is. And then I'm just going to simply, at the end of the month, write down the actual that I actually was able to put into these categories. Yes, Mason, what happened? Oh, what you did? Okay. All right. Excuse that interruption. Um, I'm a mother. Okay. So again, I will just come out, come back at the end of the month, and write down the amount that I was actually able to fund into these um, sink funds and so on. So again, at the end of the month, once everything is calculated, I will come in and put the actual amount, the actual income, the actual amount that went to ties, weekly envelopes, sick funds, bills, etc. This just gives me an overview of everything that's going on financially, um, and it helps me track pretty much what's going on. Now, we don't have a whole lot of bills outside of your normal things, um, life insurance, light bill, gas, AC, um, which is debt actually, it's the AC unit for the daycare, um, cell phones, water bill, all that stuff there. So because I don't have a whole lot, everything is condensed and it fits on this form. So I do understand that if you have more that you need to make sure you're accounting for every month that this method may not work for you. Um, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, pen and paper works. This is just how I set it up. So I know that from the first to the fifth, these bills here are due, which is the mortgage and the um, house alarm. The 6th through the 10th, water bill, cell phones, um, internet, and gym, and so on. Now, because now we're paid every two weeks, 
when we get that first check, these first weeks, um, these first of the month builds are what take, or it's what comes out or what's budgeted out for that particular paycheck and so on. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now let me show you how I budget per paycheck. Okay, so this is just, again, per paycheck. So first check would be on the 10th. I would simply write in the amount, ties, and then weekly envelopes. So let me show you guys here of um, kind of how it breaks down. I simply don't break it down like this because I have it tracked on the other sheet and I know what's going on. But weekly envelopes is 467 for this pay period. Um, 150 is for gas, 40 is for coupon, 30 for my husband, 30 for myself, 30 for the kids. Lola is 27, hair and nails is 120, family fund is 40, sink funds, and again, that's the sink funds that's on the front of the, um, the sheet here, is 145 total. That comes out to the auto insurance at 110, HOA at 40, and the Memorial Day at 140. The only bill that was due for this paycheck was the um, mortgage, so that's what comes out there. And then the debt payment, so $225 for the bank loan, $150 is the AC loan, plus we're going to be able to roll in an extra $228 for that AC um, bill, so that's the debt snowball. So I have it here at zero, so I create a zero-based budget, so when the income comes in, everything is coming out and there's nothing left. Now that may sound scary, but it's not. Because remember, I'm putting money away for all of these categories, all the other things that we have to be able to fund throughout the month. Gas, my coupon, our personal money, the dog, hair, etc. So every dollar has an assignment, every dollar has a purpose. Once everything is calculated out, we're going to be at a zero. There will be nothing left over because everything has been put into its proper category, given a job, however you want to think of it. Now, what I will do once the actual income comes in, I will write down what the actual amount was, the amount we actually put in ties. If it defers on what I'm putting in for weekly envelopes, let's say the husband's check was a shorter than what we expected, so I kind of got to move things around and maybe I can't fund 120 into the hair and nails then at that point I will um, adjust it accordingly and put the actual amount that was put in and so on since everything was able to be hit on this paycheck all I did was took it um, all I did was put a check mark just indicating that we did everything as we had budgeted out to be the only difference is that this particular paycheck was 50 bucks more than what we expected so I took that $50 and I rolled it into the debt snowball again every extra dollar I'm putting towards debt this year to become completely debt free outside of our mortgage. Okay, so then I can show you the 24th check, the next one. So I started to write in the actual income amount for budgeting, then I had to stop myself from realizing that we're not showing that. So again, the income amount would be there to ties. Weekly envelopes is at $867. Last, the last paycheck was only at $467. It's going up by $400 and I don't know, I think $30 or something like that, but no. 400, that's it, it was 467. Okay, so it's going up 400. That's because on this check here, I need to fund the grocery um, budget for February. And then again, sink funds, and then the bills that are due on this check is Jalen's Dental. Thank goodness, this is the last payment for that. So then this 135 is also going to be allocated in February and moving forward towards the debt snowball. Gym membership, light bill, life insurance, gas, and then I'm calculating that we should be able to put $950 towards debt snowball, which will be towards the AC unit. So again, once the actual check comes in, I will put the actual amounts of what happened and all that stuff there. This just works for me and has been working for me for quite some time. Now, I have this here covered up and I'll go into our debt and all that stuff in another video, but basically my plan is because the, the income that I will receive from January to the end of February, I'm going into maybe the, I think the first or second week in March for the debt snowball, I mean, I'm sorry, from the FEMA income, all of that money, my plan is to throw it straight at debt. And again, I'll go into a separate video on that. So all of that income that I'm planning to be able to receive from January to the end of February, all of that is going to go straight to debt. And that's going to knock out a huge, significant portion of that $15,000 that we still have hanging over our head. And then from there, everything else is going to be snowballed. So even though I have that income coming in from FEMA over the next couple of weeks, 
um, or two months to be exact, I'm still budgeting as if we only have one income. And then that money is just extra. It's just going to be dumped on the debt. And that's that. So, okay, let me show you now. Oh, let's stuff the cash envelopes. All right, so now let's quickly stuff our cash envelopes. So I've already taken out... Um, Gave the hubby his money, took it out my money and the coupon money. So that's in here in my wallet. And the way I know, because I need to get certain denominations, and the way I know that is that I write a little ransom ransom note to the um, bank teller on exactly the denomination and how many of those bills I needed. So for instance, 20s, I needed 20 of those, three tens, one five, and then 32 ones to equal out 467, the amount that was going into um, this week's weekly envelopes. So, yeah. All right. So, I have my bank envelope here with the cash in it. And we're just going to stuff envelopes. So, kids will get 30. I can use a little rubber band because this is a bunch of ones. And I would just put in here. Now, I don't keep a, um, a registry for theirs. I don't, I don't, I just don't. All right, then hair and nails is 120, 20, 40, 60, 80, 120. And then I will put that in there and then simply write in how much I'm depositing. Okay, auto gas. That's 150, 120, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 50. And one thing I like about doing this too for the auto gas, it definitely lets me see if, you know, gas prices go up. Sometimes we don't pay attention to it, but it lets me see too if we're starting to spend more than what we allocate per um, month towards gas. And then Lola, she's getting 27. So 20, 25, 26, 27. And the same thing for Lola. So if her grooming goes up or the cost of her food goes up or something like that, I can quickly see that when I'm pulling money out because I have it written down in the little registry. So it's gonna let me know at a glance that, oh, last month we paid 10 bucks less. Let me show you guys the other sink fund binder. And just in case anybody is worried about safety or anything like that, trust me, this is on the lock and key. And it's, 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 the best I can say it is hidden in plain sight, but you would never know it's there. So don't worry about that. So it's just a simple binder. I got probably at Walmart for two or three bucks if that. This, these are the, so you have heard of the Seeky Funds and then Cash Envelopes with Dave Ramsey. These are our Cash Envelopes, Seeky Funds, however you want to look at it. I have one for debt. So again, there are times where we have that random income that will come in. If my husband is doing Uber, he may get a tip. If he's out there doing the sports, they may pay him in cash um, or give him a little extra for staying later or doing more work. That money, we already know we're going to take it and we're going to put it towards debt as long as we are not short on any bill money that needs to be um, paid. You know, if any bills that, that needs to be paid for that month, if we're not short anything extra, we are putting it 100% towards debt. So we would put it in here, and at the end of the month or whenever one of us gets to the bank, we'll go and deposit it to the bank and then transfer it on whichever debt we're working or paying off at the moment. Um, I have minor um, core repair. So something minor, let's say the tail light goes out, the, the blinker light or whatever goes out, which happened a couple weeks ago. Go to AutoZone, spend $15, get a new bulb, replace it. The money would be here. No stress. And I know you may be thinking it's just $15, but when you're budgeting to the T and you're watching your money, $15 matters. I mean, it can, it can make or break the budget, period. So that there. Same thing with minor um, house repairs. If there's, you know, two o'clock in the morning, the toilet is overrunning and it needs a new little flappy thing, the hubby will go run right to um, home, not Home Depot at two in the morning, but right at Walmart and take the money out of here and go and buy whatever it is, you know, that may be needed. Your care. So 
there's pretty much two times a year that I really spruce up the yard and that's springtime and then around the fall. So if there's anything that I'm going to be doing, I'll budget it out and take the money out of here. And I just put a couple of dollars in here and my cap is typically about a hundred bucks because I could get away with getting fertilizer, new flowers and all that stuff at Walmart or at the plant center for about a hundred bucks. So that's that. Um, house improvement. So this is kind of a rebarbing account. So this is like... Um, I've seen a new piece of decor that I want to get for the dining room table or new plates or new picture frames or something like that. It'll come out of here. Family fun. Again, we put a few bucks in here each week. So we decide to go to the movies, go out for ice cream, whatever it looks like. Um, me and the boys are getting ready to have our boy date and go um, or a guy date and go to the Monster Jam show. So we'll be taking money out of here for that. Um, medical expense, this just covers those random medical visits. So, co-pays, um, if we had a prescription that had to get filled, it'll come out of here. If we needed some over-the-counter medicine that we didn't have, it'll come out of here. If I'm not able to get it at CVS or Walgreens with my store money with couponing. Most times than not, I can, so we wouldn't pull that out of there, but there you have it. So then I have one for school. Um, Memorial Day for Mason, our anniversary, and then it goes on. So let me show you quickly how I go about tracking the balances and whatnot for the sink funds. Um, these are for the envelope funds as well as the ones that are kept in the, um, the electronic bank account. And again, I use Capital One 360. If anyone is interested in that and have not heard about it, um, let me know down below. I'll do a quick little video or review on it, but I'll also leave a link to it. If you check it out and decide that you want to utilize their services online, you will receive um, for your, if you sign up, open an account, whether checking or savings, you will receive a $25 um, deposit, which is cash. So you get $25 from them. And for me referring you, I will get $20. So again, I'll leave it linked down below if anyone is interested. Okay, so check registries, transaction registries. Guys, I mean, this is just, this is how I do it. This, I'm pen and paper girl all the way. These are absolutely free. We get them with like checkbooks. If you don't get checks anymore, simply go to your customer service desk at your local bank, credit union, et cetera, and they will give you these for absolutely free. So this is what I do. So again, as you've seen, each envelope or each um, envelope, pencil pouch has its own for that particular um, category. So the emergency fund, when I make a deposit, even though it's going into the electronic account, again, I know we can do this on Excel, we can do it on Google Sheets. That's not my cup of tea. I like pen and paper. This way I can quickly see what's going on just like that. For me, it works. But all I would simply do is when I make a deposit, I'm going to put the date in. I mean, it's a check registry. I'm going to put the date in, the amount that's going in, right off the balance. If I have to go in and take out money for whatever, I'm going to write that down as well. I absolutely love that because it's a way for me to track and see what's going on. So let's say, for instance, I went in and I took out $100 because I wanted to get my hair done. And I didn't have it in the hair fund or whatever because I was going out with girlfriends. Well, that's not an actual emergency. So when I come back through here, I'm going to see that. I'm going to feel kind of crappy because we're going to be $100 less on what our emergency fund goal is because I took it out for my hair. And again, that's not an emergency. Or if there was a true emergency that came up, this is a great way for me to see what it was. And I can see that, oh, you know what? I don't have a sink for sink fund for that. So I had to take that large amount of money out of the actual emergency fund. And again, my emergency fund is designated for the loss of income. So that's a great way for me to see that I may need to start a, another sink fund for if something of that nature came out. Let's just say, for instance, um, the car. Remember, I got in a wreck at the top of 2017, so I had to buy a new vehicle. So if I didn't have a auto um, replacement fund already, which I did, thank God, but if I did not, I would have had to take that out of the emergency fund. So at that point, I would have realized, well, maybe I need to start a auto replacement fund, rearrange the numbers, rearrange the budget, and maybe not put so much money towards hair and nails and put money back towards um, being able to buy a car, etc., etc. So you guys get me there. So again, this is how I track those. Emergency fund, auto insurance, Lola's, and then I have a few um, empty ones in case something else comes up. This works for me, guys. Paper and pen all day. Um, and they're free. Absolutely free. And you get so many pages in here. You can go back and you can see. I mean, I have 
for you know years back you could go in and see what was going on what you had going on what what was this what was that it kind of track your progress and all of that stuff there so again it's free it, it works for me <laughs> can't beat that um and then too because i am married it's not just me it is the husband we can both see what's going on and it's a way just to keep each other accountable um in a nutshell this is my system this is how we roll so to speak or how we do things um pretty much in a nutshell so again this is our cash envelope slash sinking funds and if you're if you aren't familiar with sinking funds um ask me questions down below i don't mind but basically the concept is there are many savings accounts dedicated to certain categories and those categories could be anything that you choose whatever you want it's your it is your budget you choose but for me this having a minor house repair minor car repair um yard and all that stuff there it keeps me from going into the actual emergency fund that's my six month emergency fund it keeps me from pulling all of that dibble and dabble type thing because the money is set aside here and in reality before i started doing this or budgeting this way and, and seek funny is if i had money left over at the end of the pay week that money would get dissolved i would be eating out buying something that i need to buy whatever the case is but once i realized that even though i have money left over at the end of this paycheck in reality i still got all this month left and then i still have you know the rest of the year left where there may be time throughout the year especially with the daycare business where um income is short because the kids are not in daycare or you know out for summer so they're home with their older siblings etc i needed to make sure that i had money put away in these areas that way i have money <laughs> that's the best way i can put it so think of it as a mini savings account in a nutshell all right so that is pretty much it guys if you stayed around to the end of this video you are a true true friend and i thank you for it i know it was quite long uh, but again, very detailed, and I wanted to give you guys that information. Now, I would love, love to bless someone with this system. Um, with actually the budget binder system, as well as the sink fine binder. It's very simple to create. Again, this I got at Walmart for about maybe two or three bucks. Um, this one here, I probably got it, probably got it at the office supply store. It's a little bit more fancier binder, um, or what have you. So... It didn't take me much, but I would love to set this up for someone um, and bless someone with it. So I will be doing two separate giveaways. Um, so I will do one for the budget binder and then one for the sync fund binder. Not quite sure what question I'm going to ask. I will leave it on the screen. Um, answer that question in the comments down below. And then at the time of me announcing the giveaway winners, at that time, you can let me know whether or not you want the budget binder or the sync fund binder. Um, or I might be able just to do four binders total. So two budget, two sync funds, and then two people will win the giveaway and both get um, two binders, if that makes sense. So again, thank you so very much. Um, but that is my system and how we roll in All right, a guys, nutshell. So I hope that this video was helpful. Do let me know in the comments below by answering the questions that I have linked down in the description box. How do you go about handling things in your finances? And of course, for any other creator out there, if you want to take these topics and build on them and share with your community how you go about handling your budget, finances, and all that stuff there, please feel free to do so. And definitely let me know as I will definitely come over and watch that video too. So as always, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're not already. And until next time, guys, stay true.